Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the praise. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone is energized after the lunch. So today we will look at lesson 24, which is the third and the last lesson uh, on the works of the judges. So um, I think we have covered all the way to, you know, the eight uh, judges. So uh, today we will cover the last four, which is Ibzan, Elon, Abdon, and Samson. So Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, they are the minor judges, and Samson is the major judges. So I will just uh, dive right into the lesson before the food coma kicks in. Okay. <laughs> so the first uh, judge that we'll look at is Ibzan. His name means uh, splendid and brilliant. So... Um, in Judges 12 verse 9, it says that he had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he gave in marriage outside the family and he brought 30 daughters from outside for his son and he judged Israel seven years. So this is the only record for Ibzan. He has 60 children throughout his life and he gave them away in marriage. There is no record of him saving the nation or serving the people as judge. Ibzan only focused on his personal affair and his heart is more inclined to the benefit that he enjoy as a judge. So secondly, Itzan lived an extravagant life. So during the seven years, Itzan was busy with weddings and birthdays for his children and wives. And it seems like Itzan got all his children married during his seven years of reign. So 60 children in seven years. Can you help me do the math? You have, he has 60 children in seven years. So one year, how many weddings? Samuel, your math is very good, right? Eight. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Michelle. Eight to nine weddings in a year. Can you imagine that? Even if you have a wedding, once a year is so tiring. He's doing eight to nine weddings in a year. And we know that wedding can be a very big event, right? And it spends, we spend a lot of money. There is jewelry, gift, the banquet, and everything. And this is wedding to foreigners. So this kind of wedding can last for days and weeks, right? Because they need to travel back and forth. They need to do wedding and both locations. So the whole family, Izan and his family, are occupied with just weddings and celebration. And who is paying for that? The people of Israel. The people of Israel have to bear the yoke and the financial burden of all these weddings. So if you, we look at verse in, on Judges 12, uh, verse 9 again, it says that he gave his daughter to marriage outside the wedding. And he also brought 30 daughters from outside for his sons. So this word outside is not just referring to, you know, outside his family or tribe. It refers, this word is Who's, which refers to outside the camp. And in the Old Testament, when you say outside the camp, it refers to unclean area where the outcast you know, is, being, uh, is, is located. So this is shocking because Itzan, as a judge, he was marrying his children to Gentiles who has nothing to do with the covenant of God. And why is he doing that? So um, in Judges chapter 10, verse 7 to 8, it says that the anger of the Lord burned against Israel and he sold them into the hands of Philistine, into the hands of the son of Ammon. They afflicted and crushed the corns of Israel that year and 18 years they afflicted all the sons of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in Gilead and in in the land of Amorites. So during the reign of the minor judges of Ibzan, Adlon, and Edmund, it overlaps with the period of Israel oppression by the Philistine. And instead of relying on God, Ibzan actually devises a marriage uh, policy to develop a very amicable relationship with the Philistine, with the foreigners. So when imagine that when you bring a foreign wife who worship idol into your countries, they will bring the whole gang of their idols right, into the country. So in Israel history, if we look at King uh, Jehoram who married Ataliah, and also if we look at Solomon with his whole pool of uh, the foreign wives and concubines, they brought in idols and corrupt the whole nation. right? So even though this seems to be a quiet time for Israel, 
but inwardly it is a time of chaos and idolatry uh, for them. Because uh, during this time, he has allowed all these idols to come into Israel. Okay, so the second judge uh, that we look at is Eglon, which means uh, oak. His name also means man of strength or uh, strong man. So uh, during the time, so Eglon, he was uh, from uh, the tribe of Ephraim. So I think last week uh, you studied about a judge named Jephthah. So Jeph, uh, Jephthah, when he had the victory with the Amorites, the tribe of Ephraim, they were jealous, right? So they war with Jephthah. And during that war, 42,000 men died during that war with Jephthah. So uh, 20 years later, this man appeared, right? And then it means that he is a man of great strength and great ability. And that is why he was uh, selected as the judge. So, but when we look at uh, Eglon, there was, there was no mention of what he had done during, uh, during you know, the time of him as judge. And when he was, uh, when he was a judge, the, it, had, it did not mention that the land was not disturbed during the time of Eglon. So undisturbed means that it is a time of peace, it is time of blessing and liberation from uh, foreign uh, suffering, oppression uh, and attacks. So when we look at judges like Othniel, Ehud, uh, Gideon and Deborah, the land was undisturbed. But when we look at uh, judges like Itzan, Elon and Abdon, there was no expression that the land was uh, undisturbed. So at Eglon uh, ruled for 10 years and there was no record of any effort to purge out the idols or fight with foreign attacks. So again, the land was dull and quiet for 10 years, but in fact, there is no true peace that was given by God. Okay? Okay, so... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, the judges that actually fought with the Ephraim was Adon. Sorry for that. So the third judge is uh, Adon. He is the minor judge. So uh, sorry, just now, as mentioned just now, so he is the Ephraimite that actually uh, judged Israel for eight years. And he basically is a man of great ability from the tribe of Ephraim. So, uh, so based on on what we see here as well, it has no records of his deeds for the nation. And in Judges chapter 12, verse 14, it says that he has uh, 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys. So it means that he has a lot, a lot of wife to produce 40 uh, sons. And this shows that um, during the time of Adon, it was peaceful but there was also spiritual corruption in Israel. So when we look at um, this, uh, this time when uh, Abdon became judge, it was also the time of the oppression of Philistine. And if you imagine, it, it was from the time of uh, Ibzan to Eglon and Abdon. Throughout these years, they were all oppressed by the Philistine. So they must be so frustrated and and they must be so depressed that they may has, they have gone to Abdon and called out to him, right? And cried out to him to save them from the Philistine. But Abdon has no interest in saving them at all, even though the people are crying out to him. But here it says that, again, uh, he is busy marrying off his children. So just now it says that he has 40 sons, 30 grandsons, and they wrought uh, on... 70 donkeys. So during those times, in fact, donkey is, uh, is a sign of a high stature in society. means that you are someone with a high status. So in today's term, if he, in, he got a car, it, it means that he bought a car for every single one of his children. He bought 70 cars, and today it's just like a Mercedes Benz, okay? And you imagine today, today uh, Singapore's COE is 100, around 100k. A car can easily be 150k. If, if he spends 70, he buys 70 cars, it means that he spent millions on just cars. So it shows us that Abdon was extremely, extremely rich 
it's just like the crazy rich Asian movies, you know. He, they are just very, very rich. But although he has the precious calling from God as judge to serve, right? But he was only interested in his personal affair. So he became the slave to the world instead of slave to God. And he chased after material wealth. So today, all of us here also have the precious calling from God. Therefore, may we strive to become the servant of God instead of the servant of the world. Okay, and the last judge is uh, Samson. So Samson was a major judge and his name means man of sun, a uh, man of sun like the sun or sunshine. So let us read uh, Judges chapter 13 verse uh, 2 to 5. It says that, and there was a man of Zorah of the family of their knights whose name was Manoah and his wife was infertile and had not given birth to any children. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold now, you are infertile and have not given birth, but you will conceive and give birth to a son. And now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat anything unclean. For behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor should shall come upon his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite from God, to God from the womb, and he will begin to save Israel from the hands of Philistine. So Manuah's wife cannot bear children, and Samson was born after the annunciation from the angel. And Samson was a Nazarite to God from the womb. A Nazarite is someone that is dedicated to God, and they are not to touch any corpse, they are not to drink any alcohol, and they cannot cut their hair. So Nazarite is someone that is um, really dedicated to God. So even before Samson was born, he was predestined, God has predestined him to use him to save Israel. So Samson, when, after he grew, grew up, God's spirit was upon him. So he planned to take the daughter of a Philistine as wife so that he can use it as a use the marriage as an excuse to strike uh, the Philistine. So in Judges chapter 14 verse 4, it says, However, his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against Philistine, and at that time the Philistines were ruling over Israel. So his parents were, were opposing this marriage because they did not know that it was from God. So Samson went to the Philistine. He proposed a riddle, uh, and this is written in Judges chapter 14, verse 14. It says that out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. I believe many is familiar with that story, because Samson, on his way to meet with his bride, there was a lion. He actually killed the lion with his, with his bare hands. And after, some time later, he returned, and in the carcass of the lion, there was a swarm of bee, and there was some honey. And as a Nazarite, he was not supposed to touch the corpse, but he is somehow rebellious in nature, as we can see. He took the honey, he ate it, and he given, even gave it to his parents. So using this experience, he actually uh, made a riddle, and you know he posed it to the Philistine, who was unable to un answer the riddle. So what happened was that they went to threaten um, his Philistine wives and telling them that if you know, they, they, will, you know, they will hurt her if they, she don't get the answer for them. So she pleaded with Sansom and Sansom actually gave her the answer. So in the end, Sansom lost the bet because he was unable to keep a secret. And Samson as a Nazarite, first he married a Gentile woman, he touched corpse, he drank alcohol, he break the rules of a Nazarite. Yet, you can see that throughout Judges, there are many instances that God's Spirit still come upon him so that he can defeat the Israelites. So therefore, this shows us that, in fact, God advances his work of salvation despite of our human shortcomings and despite of our sins. God still uses, for by his grace, for our salvation. So our salvation is not by human power, but it is truly by the grace of God. Okay? And, and when we read through Judges 14 and 15, we can see how Sansom continued to challenge and he continued to provoke the Philistine. 
And every time when he needs to fight against the Philistine, there will be a statement that says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And in one occasion, he actually took a fresh uh, donkey jawbone and he killed 1,000. Like, this is quite amazing, right? How can you kill 1,000 people with a jawbone? But he did that because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And after that very intense battle, Samson was very, very exhausted. And he was very thirsty, so he called upon God. And in, in uh, Judges chapter 15, verse 18 to 19, it says that then he became very thirsty and he called to the Lord and said, You have handed this great victory over to your servant. Now am I to die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? But God split the hollow land that is in Lehi so that the water came out of it. When he drank, his strength returned and revived. Therefore, he called it En Hakor, which is Lehi to this day. So God responded to him by performing a miracle of splitting the ground so that the water came out of it. And his strength returned and he revived after drinking the water. So he called the place En Hakor, which means spring of the one calling, where he drank this living water from God. Because if God has not performed this miracle, Samson would have died in the hands of Philistine. So this is also God, through this story, He is reminding us that when we feel that our body and our mind has reached its limit, that when we are tested to a point where we feel hopeless, and there are times when we feel like we are dying inside, He is telling us that we can rely on Him. And when we pray to Him earnestly, He will definitely answer us and give us new strength, and He will restore us. And in fact, we hear this many, many, many times, right? Like, you know, every Bible study, we hear that God asks us to pray to Him earnestly, and He will come to us. But to be honest, when we are in deep, deep trouble, actually it is more convenient for us to just get frustrated and just to grumble and take things into our hand, right? Many times when things happen, for example, for me, I will forget. The first thing I need to do is pray. But I will get frustrated, I will try to solve the problem on my own even though I heard this so many times through the Bible study. So I think this is also a good reminder for all of us, right? That in times of trouble, let us, the first thing that we need to do is really to pray. As God has told us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and by petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus. So even when life is tough and the people around you is making it even tougher, please remember that our Father who is the creator of heaven and earth is by our side. And when we pray earnestly for deliverance, for the, our situation and pray for those who afflicted for us, afflicted us as well. May we re experience this uh, li living water just like Samson. Okay, and okay, so um, and the story continues. I think all of us heard about Delilah, right? The very famous story of Samson and Delilah. So Samson fall in love with this lady called Delilah, and. He was like the son to the Israelites, right, during the 40 years of the Philistine oppression because he came and, you know, he saved them out of this very difficult time. However, he made a very ultimate mistake of revealing his secret, the secret behind his power. Basically, he told them, he told the secret, you know, that if he, you know, lost his hair, then he will lose his power. So he fell into a miserable, miserable state because he failed to keep the secret that God has told him to keep. So when the Philistines find out, they cut his hair, they got out his eye, and he was kept you know, as a prisoner uh, by the Philistines. So in Judges chapter 16, verse 28, this was uh, Samson repenting and trying to grab hold of the final opportunity uh, given to him. So he said, Oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me just this time. Oh God, that I may at once be avenged of Philistine for my two eyes. And during this time, God heard his prayer. And at this time, 
Samson bent with all his might, and the temple fell along with the pillars, and he in fact killed more Philistines than you know all the lifetime he had as a judge. He, I think he killed around 3,000, including men and women, and you know all of them was crushed when, when the pillars and the temple fell down. So as a conclusion, okay? So today we study a uh, three minor judge, which is uh, Ibsan, Adlon, and Adam, uh, Abdon, who received God's calling and grace, but they did not use it uh, for God's people. They did not use it for God's purpose, but for the pursuit of their own success. On the other hand, Samson was a major judge. However, he lost his eye and have a tragic uh, end because he failed to overcome his personal issue and his fleshly desires. So just like what happened to these judges, right? Satan will persistently look for opportunity to tempt the believers so that we will turn away from God and we will chase after worldly success and pleasure, just like what Pastor shared today, right? He will continue to tempt us again and again. You know, even we overcome, he will come and tempt us, tempt us again. So, and we often hear nowadays, right? People always say, life is short, enjoy it to the fullest. That's what the world kept on telling us and our young children. Yes, life is indeed short. But we as believers know that after the physical death, the eternal, the spirit, spiritually, the eternal, eternally, we will either rest in heaven or we will suffer in hell. To us, life is not short because we know that there is eternity. So let us embrace the time that we have here to fill up you know, our report cards. Because if we look at Elon, Right. His life, there was no record of what he done. It's basically as good as, uh, you know, during the year-end exam or during the year-end review at Outwork, you see a F. There's nothing. The boss say, okay, it's end of the year. Open up performance review. Nothing. You have done nothing. Or, you know, the students you open up is all fail. So it's, it's a, as good as that, you know, if you look at, you know, all the minor judges. So during our time here, let us uh, work hard to fill up our report book on this earth, right? So if, you, if we look around, right, you, you look around, many of our Zion Church members hold many roles and many responsibility, right? All of you, if you look, you know, they are, you know, AV, Asher, and all this, you know, Hora, and all this responsibility that every single one of you is holding on top of your commitment to your family, to your school, and, you know, at work. So there are times that we are just so overwhelmed that we feel like exhausted and even frustrated, right, at time with the people and the situation around us. But uh, please hang in there, brother and sisters, because I believe that Zion Church member report cards are filled with pages and pages of good work in the end. And uh, at times when we are tempted and forgotten the callings and the duty that is entrusted to us, we should seize the opportunity to repent earnestly, just like Samson. Because when we have a contrite spirit and we repent, like Samson, we can accomplish great works for God. And just like Samson, we may be able to um, accomplish a greater work than any of the work that we have done before, when we repent and we seek God earnestly. So, therefore, as Zion Church continue to dedicate our lives to God's administra administration of redemption, may the Spirit of God be mightily upon each and every one of the member here, so that we will be able to fulfill the task that God has given us and gain victory in all our battles. Thank you. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you, Father, for the lessons and the word that you have given us through the life of the judges, Father. Lord, we give thanks to you, Father, that even in the midst of our sins, our shortcomings, Father, that you are faithful, Lord, that you have hold on to us, Father, even to this moment, Father. We know that every breath that we take, Father God, every word that we are able to speak, every step that we are taking,
taking, Father. It is only truly by your grace and it is only truly by your love, Father. So, Father, we want to pray that you will bless every single member here, Father, that your spirit will fall mightily upon them and continue, Father, to enable them, Father, to push us forward, Lord, to fulfill all the tasks that you have given us, Father. And we pray, Father God, let this word of history of redemption, Father, continue to fill all multitude, tongue and nations, Father, until your will is accomplished on this earth and in heaven, Lord. We give thanks to you once again, Father, for this opportunity, Lord, for us to serve you. We pray, Father, that you will help us, Father, to truly love one another, to embrace one another, Father, with our strength and weaknesses, Father, that we will be able to work together as one to fulfill your will, Father God, and Lord, to be able to bring many lost souls back to you, Lord. We give thanks to you and we want to commit uh, Zion Church, we want to commit every single members and family into your hand. And we pray all this in our Lord Jesus Christ, most precious and holy name, we thanksgiving. Amen.